when America places sanctions on you, just know it's over for you. Because guess what is going to happen? The EU is going to follow. Um, the UK is going to follow. Canada will follow. New Zealand will follow. Australia will follow. Anybody that is anybody will impose the same sanctions, if not strictest sanctions on you, the moment one Western country imposes sanctions on you. And the president of Namibia says, it's really high time we rethink how we impose sanctions on these countries. And also it's high time that we lift sanctions um, of some of these countries because to be honest, they're hurting the economy and they're hurting the very people that you think that you are protecting. Namibia appeals to the United States of America to remo remove the Republic of Cuba from the list of state sponsors of terrorism, as there is no evidence to support such classification. Selective punitive measures against Zimbabwe and Venezuela must also be lifted, as these measures constitute the greatest obstacle to the implementation of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Hello there, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of our conversations. My name is Ndira Ganga. I am a business journalist by profession and a digital content creator. I love coming on here, having a conversation with you guys about black people, Africa, our empowerment, and how we can rise up and take our rightful place at the global stage. You can connect to me on social media at Ondero Ganga on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm going to keep today's video very brief because there isn't much to say about it outside of the fact that um, the president of Namibia is calling for the removal of sanctions on several countries that have been under sanctions for a long time. I'm going to single out Zimbabwe because it's an African country and Africa is our business. Um, for the last two decades, Zimbabwe has been under sanctions by the United States of America, one which is still under enforcement and another that is not very much on enforcement, but still hurts Zimbabwe and the Zimbabwean economy. Now, there were, uh, were allegations and evidence of human rights abuse in Zimbabwe during the reign of um, President Robert Mugabe, who has since passed away after being ousted from power. And America... Um, enforced travel sanctions against some members of the government and security forces, which is still in force. The second sanction was American businesses are not to do business or are advised against. They are not forced, but they are advised against doing business with um, certain entities in Zimbabwe. And they are advised against giving credit to Zimbabwe. And this has had a trickle down effect because it's not just American businesses. It's all businesses, um, European businesses, businesses from every, from the developed countries. They will not touch Zimbabwe even by a 10 foot pole because you do not want the repercussions that come with doing business with such a country. Zimbabwe has also been frozen out from the international lending market because IMF and the World Bank froze them out due to the inability to pay. But it's also very important. I have friends who are from Zimbabwe and they've spoken to me a little bit about um, the crash that happened, the financial and economic crash that happened in Zimbabwe in the mid 2000s. And times got really tough towards the end of the tenure of President Robert Mugabe. The money has lost its value. They either use the South African currency or the dollar. Poverty rates have gone up in a country that is rich in gold. That is mostly due to, um, you know, poor governance, but also exploitation. We can't rule that out. And so when they default from payment, paying back their loans, there's so many, there's so many reasons why they defaulted and just freezing them out. How long will you freeze them out? The country is literally crumbling, you know. So the president of Namibia says it's high time. And this is something that even the president of South Africa spoke during his visit to Washington. Unfortunately, Biden um, enforced those same sanctions by another year. Maybe there's hope that once the year elapses, there'll be room for conversation. But I salute the president of Namibia for taking an opportunity at the United Nations General Assembly. Of all the things that he could talk about, he chose to advocate for his fellow African brother. And I think it's high time that both the leadership of Zimbabwe and all the other global leaders go back to the table. Make a set of irreducible minimums. If you want us to remove the sanctions, Zimbabwe must do A, B, C and D. Because just imposing sanctions and leaving them at that you're hurting the country and you're hurting the people because you might think that you're punishing the leader, but in essence, you're always punishing the people. The leaders will always find extravagant ways of living. Most of them don't live in that country. Their children don't live in that country. They don't get educated in that country. They don't get healthcare in that country, you understand? So, and when you stop um, credible entities from doing business in that country, 
what you're doing is you're opening up the route for illegal business there was this huge documentary that came out with al jazeera it was called gold i think gold mafia and showed how gold is smuggled from zimbabwe to anywhere in the world because now zimbabwe cannot do legal business with any other person and so what they're left with is that unscrupulous business and guess who it benefits it benefits a few greedy corrupt people in power so if western powers are really interested in the people of zimbabwe and that's the reason why they impose the sanctions i think it's high time to go back to the table and say these are our irreducible minimums to be able to do business with you to be able to open you up again to the rest of the world who is us the powerful ones these are the things that you need to do. Let's listen to what the president of Namibia had to say. Punitive measures imposed for over half a century on the Republic of Cuba have brought untold hardships that have disenfranchised the Cuban people. The embargo against the Cuban people remains unjust and must therefore be lifted. Namibia appeals to the United States of America to remove the Republic of Cuba from the list of state sponsors of terrorism, as there is no evidence to support such classification. Selective punitive measures against Zimbabwe and Venezuela must also be lifted, as these measures constitute the greatest obstacle to the implementation of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The United Nations Charter remains an important source of inspiration, reflecting the com commonality agreed upon values of diplomacy and peaceful coexistence. We regard the Charter enshrined rights to self-determination for all peoples as essential. This rings true for the people of Western Sahara. While our right to self-determination has been upheld, the people of Western Sahara continue to remain under occupation. We recall how Morocco supported our right to self-determination, and now we call on them to do the same for the people of Western Sahara. Similarly, the people of Palestine yearn to transition from the inhuman conditions of oppressive rule. Namibia is therefore pleased with the decision of the General Assembly to submit to the International Court of Justice a request for an advisory opinion on legal consequences arising from the ongoing violation by Israel of the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination. Mr. President, the challenges we face today are not insurmountable. By holding hands and by renewing our commitment to multilateralism, we can reverse the worst effects of the unprecedented global challenges of global warming, global inequality, pandemics, and conflicts. By holding hands, we have it within us to act now and to build the world we want. In that world, no one should feel left out. I thank you. That's all I had for you in this video. Thank you very much for watching. And oh, I was telling you I have a friend from Zim because again, I just told you very depressing things about Zimbabwe. But there's amazing things about Zimbabwe, the nature, the people, the wildlife, and also the food. There's, there's a lady here um, that does Zimbabwean food because I told you I have a friend that's Zimbabwean and I've tried Zimbabwean food before and it's really amazing. Let me know if you would like me to go interview her and show you how Zimbabwean food is made and we can enjoy Zimbabwean food because I feel like it's very important alternative narratives. Zimbabwe might be struggling, but there's still very amazing things about Zimbabwe and I don't want to be part of when history is written, I don't want to just be part of those people that highlighted the political challenges in Africa. There are so many amazing things that are going right on the continent or that are just beautiful. They don't have to be going right. They can be beautiful. Two things can coexist. So let me know if that's a video you would be interested in seeing. I'll see you again next time.